Hey everyone, welcome back to another painting tutorial. As always, my name is Jay, and today I'll be showing you how I paint up this Azrael model, one of the really cool HQ models for the Dark Angels army. He's a lot of fun. So I start off by priming the entire model black, and then I applied a gray primer at a 45 degree angle to the body, because I want to keep the, uh, the banner dark, since I'll, it'll be primarily a dark color in the background. And then with a handy dandy Zotar 2020, I applied a nice highlighting up with Raven Black over the banner. Uh, Raven Black is actually a very dark matte gray, similar to gray liner, the one color I use a lot from Reaper. So uh, it's actually not a very black and it's a good color to highlight up the, uh, the banner up with. And of course, airbrushes save a lot of time and are quite handy. And then I took my airbrush once again and I applied Caliban green to the body. So all the parts of the armor that are going to be green and the banner, uh, the, the cloak on the banner that uh, of the Dark Angel, he'll also be green. Caliban green is a very dark green as well. And it's very thin. Uh, I didn't have to put much airbrush medium into it at all to become uh, to quite airbrushable. And then I, so I applied it to the body and the feet of Azrael. The rest is going to be cloak, um, so it'll actually be bone tones. And then I took a one-to-one -one mix of Caliban Green and Warpstone Glow, and I highlighted up the model on the, uh, the cloaked figure on the banner. And then I had 45 degree angle once again, I applied this to the body of him as well. And that's the thing about this model. It, a lot of the colors are going to be focused on the banner, since he is such an intricate banner, and uh, his actually the colors on his body are actually much fewer than the colors I'll be using on his banner. As you get a 45 degree angle, I then hit the, the body of the model with it. And then I used straight warpstone glow, and once again highlighted up the ex the just the outer parts of the cloak on the cloaked figure on the banner. This tutorial, you're gonna hear me say the word banner a lot. And then I just, I switched airbrushes and applied a nice satin varnish all over the model. This model is metal, and that's really weird, but it's it's one of the models that, still, that GW still keeps in metal. So the goal is to protect it, and uh, because this is a giant, huge, heavy paperweight of, of weight, so you don't want it to chip when it falls. So this is a great time to create a saving point if you make a mistake later, and plus it protects the coat. I will be applying several satin varnishes throughout the painting process. Next I focused on the uh, small inner cloak uh, with a one-to-one -one mix of Etchimos and Raven Black from Minotaur. It's a, that way it created a very dark purple, and then I then highlighted up with a extra Etchimos in the same combination, just at the outer parts, that way it's a, a bit of a color discrepancy and there's, you know, some good highlighting. Then on the outer cloak, which I just took Ushabti Bone, in retrospect maybe I should have taken Xandri Dust first as a base coat and then did a thin coat of Ushabti Bone over it. It's okay, I just thinned down Ushabti Bone and applied two nice thin coats of it. The first coat, as you can see, comes off a little transparent and the green is showing underneath, but the second coat really does um, complete it and really has a nice solid foundation. And whenever doing thin layers of light colors over dark, it's always good to do multiple thin coats. That way you can get a nice even foundation uh, before proceeding to the shades and highlights. So as you see now, I'm just going to focus this through Shabdi Bone on all the bone areas of the model as well, and the cloak, and the some of the parts of the banner. There's the hands on the model, uh, the skull up at the top, and the... Um, the any part that's paper on the banner. So I'm just doing the skulls on his backpack. And then I applied a, two different shades. So for the cloak, I applied a Seraphim Sepia shade because I wanted to give it that sepia appearance in the recesses and that uh, a slight sepia undertone. But for the bone areas and the banner parts, I will be applying an Agrax Earthshade um, shading because I want them to be more dark and brown as opposed to the sepia appearance of the cloak. And, so, and also apply that to the um, to Agrax Earthshade over the Purity Seal. That way it's a good way to differentiate these, uh, these areas 
and uh, really make them just stand out. When you're using the similar color schemes, like and I'll be using the same base coat and highlight colors, it's a good way to differentiate them is using shades. So right now I'm just applying the Agrax Earthshade to the bones and the banner. I really like the way that Agrax Earthshade looks on the uh, on the anywhere that you're doing bone. So it's a good color. And then on the Purity Seal. I decided to add a little bit more definition to the green armor. I wasn't happy with it. I thought it looked a little flat. So then I went over it with some Bile Tan Green. Just to put in the recesses. Uh, since I varnished it anyway, it has a great surface tension. And uh, then when the cloak was dry, I then highlighted it up using Ushapti Bone. And for the highlights of the cloak, basically what I do is I started off on the on the raised areas as I typically paint my cloaks by defining the raised areas and then work my way down towards the recesses and uh, building it back up basically as Ushapti Bone, leaving the, se the sepia shading in the deep recesses of the uh, cloak. So this step took a little bit of time because I slowly had to build up each part of the cloak. And there's a lot of waves in Azrael's cloak, as you can see. It has a lot of dimension. And then I took the Shabdi bone and then re-highlighted up the bone areas and the banner parts. Doing a quick overbrush of these areas, give them some definition. And then I repeat this process once again with uh, Screaming Skull, which is the lightest color. It's a, it's a slight off white. And I just repeat this and highlight up certain parts of the cloak that I really wanted to pop. And uh, I, once again, I highlight up the cloak by starting at the raised areas and work only a little bit down towards the recesses. I wanted to have a nice gradient of colors. And this just allowed me to do a quick highlight and uh, just add another color really make it uh, stand out. Then of course I did the same thing with the uh, skull parts as well. Just a quick overbrush of the skull areas and uh, the bone areas just to give them a little bit more of a color scheme as well. Then I returned back to the body and just did a quick, couple quick edge highlights with a one-to-one -one mix of Caliban Green and Warp Snow Glow. That way it just makes them stand out. Brings your atten it brings the attention to certain parts that I really just want to be highlighted up. I should have probably done this at the beginning, but it's okay. Better late than never. For the skin, which is just his face, I start off with rat skin flesh, as I normally do in my normal skin uh, color scheme. Try to get a nice solid coat of rat skin flesh over his skin area, his face. And then as always, I don't like going straight to the shading because Raiklin flesh shade can be pretty dark, especially if applied over rat skin flesh. So then I went to Bestigore flesh first. That way the flesh shade is going over the Bestigore flesh and it's less of an intense uh, shading. So said then I went with Raiklin Flesh and just applied a nice Raiklin Flesh shade over these areas. Now I'll just get in the recess and give a lot uh, some character without going too crazy on the face. Not a lot of skin on this model. Well that was drying, I then started with Mephiston Red on all the red areas of the model. And there's going to be a bunch, basically his plasma gun, the part of his combi plasma. Um, but uh, what I did was I took an airbrush and I temporarily wanted to work on the flames on his banner. So I started with my airbrush and I applied my fist on red with my Sotar 2020 all to the banner. I'm gonna get a nice gradient of colors and then just clean it up later with some uh, gray liner. That way you can get away with minimum masking and it saves a lot of time. So first with my fist on red getting a nice solid coat for the flames behind the uh, the Dark Angel 
and then repeat this process with, with Evil Sun Scarlet, leaving the darkest color at the bottom. So feathering it up uh, upwards with Evil Sun Scarlet and getting a nice gradient of colors. And then once again, the next color I used was uh, after this, as you can see, it's just building up a nice gradient of reds. And then I went to the next level of red after this, which is of course Wild Rider Red. As you can see, it's such a huge model because of the banner. It's sometimes hard to keep it all in frame. But uh, and with, with Wild Rider Red, which is an orangey red, and then Troll Slayer Orange. Once again, each step using less and less paint, working my way less and less down the flames. And then a one-to-one -one mix of Troll Slayer Orange and Eero Yellow, producing a very bright orange at the very top. And then we got a nice gradient on the flames. And then I return back to the face with Best Decor Flesh. That way there's not too extreme of a difference between the recesses and the raised areas. And then a one-to-one -one mix of Best Decor Flesh and Unger Flesh, just picking out certain details like his forehead, his cheekbones, eyebrows, jawline, really making them stand out and pop. And then finally, Ungor Flesh, just by itself. Uh, repeating the process once again. Just picking out certain details, the nose, the eyebrows, the cheeks, that I really just want to bring the, the attention to on the features of his face. Now that the face is done, basically, just finish tidying it up. And he's good to go. I then took gray liner, and once again, as I said, I cleaned up the banner with the gray liner, and then I also applied the gray liner to the gaps in the armor and his hair. That way, because uh, his hair is basically, a, it'll be an off black, so that wouldn't be too bad. So I just cleaned up the banner quickly, and then applied it to all the gaps in the armor. And also used gray liner later to, to paint his gun. That's not the combi part of the combi plasma part. Everything else will be uh, the gray liner. That's not the uh, the wing as well. So that was done. I then took white scar and thinned it down slightly and applied it to all of the winged areas of the model. In retrospect, I probably I might. Wanted to have used uh, ghost white instead. That way, I produced a nice, a bit more of a blue tinge to it in the end. But I don't mind. White scar worked well, so I applied a couple thin coats to these areas: the wings on the chest, the wing on the gun, the wings on the banner, and the wings on his shoulder pad. A lot of wings on the wing at the top of his banner as well. There's a little uh, angel figure. And even though I'm going over black, uh, a couple thin coats of white scars really did work well. Didn't go on too chalky or clumpy. And look good. And for the wings, once again, Getting the nice definition on the wings. And when that was all done, I applied a watered down Draken of Nightshade. So it was about two parts Draken of Nightshade to one part water. That way it's a little thinner, it doesn't go on too crazily and overwhelm the white. I just wanted a blue tinge to these areas. And once again, applied the Draken of Nightshade to all of the winged areas. That way they have a blue tint. and then re-highlighted them up with white scars, leaving a bit of the Draken of Nightshade in the recesses and along the edges.
and see just building up those whites again. For the sword, I decided to try a new color that I haven't used in a while, or used ever actually, sorry, from uh, Reaper, called Sparkling Blue. It is a metallic blue, it's a very dark blue, since Azrael's sword is blue. So I figured it'd be a good combination, rather than applying like, a dark silver and, and, and tinting it. So I just applied Sparkling Blue all over the entire sword. As you can see, it's a very shiny metallic blue. And then I just took a 1-1 mix of Iron Breaker and Sparkling Blue, once again, and uh, and I just used a two brush blending technique to blend it towards the top of the sword. So I started off, of course, applying some of this combination to the top and then taking my other brush with just Sparkling Blue and then, you know, blended it up basically quickly, making a nice gradient of colors. These metallics tend to blend quite nicely together, so it just took a little bit of time, but it uh, ended up with a nice result in the end. Just doing this two brush blend. The key is to work fast, work with wet paints, and uh, constantly just add and subtract the effect until you're happy with the nice blend. And when that was done, I took Lead Belger, the dark silver metallic from the Citadel range, and applied it to the gun, um, his backpack. Not much of the actual model will be silver metallic, and then the pole on his banner. So not a lot of silver is actually on this model. Oh yeah, and then the edging around his uh, pack. In retrospect, I should have painted red first and then did it, but it's okay. I just had to be a little more cautious when painting the reds in between the silver areas on his, uh, his satchel or his gun holster. As you see, I'm just applying the lead belcher to the pole of his banner. And then highlighted up the silver areas with Iron Breaker. So yeah, so basically I applied a non oil shade to these areas because uh, that way it gives them an older appearance. Always gives them secret definition. And then highlighted up with Iron Breaker, the mid-tone silver from the Citadel range. I just gave a quick overbrush to these areas, giving a little bit of texture and to bring out some, uh, some variation. That way it's not just a monotone metal color. Then next I started on the reds again. So with Mephisto on red, I applied it to the top of the purity seal and the edging around the banner and the uh, symbol, basically all the sword on all of the symbols are gonna be this red as well. And the plasma gun uh, is a combi plasma. Just the top of it is going to be, or the very edge of it is going to be Mephisto on red. And then once again, I cut in all the metallics on, the, uh, on his gun holster. The good thing about Mephist on Red is that it goes over pretty much anything with relative ease. It's a nice color, has a lot of good pigments. And then I quick carefully painted the edging around the banner as well. Once again, if I screwed up, I knew I could just clean it up slightly with some gray liner, but I didn't want to screw up, obviously. You want to take your time and get a nice edging around it. And I also painted a sword on his banner. Next I gave a quick shade to the gun and uh, the purity seal with Caraber Crimson. 
I didn't apply it to the banner because I wanted to look more realistic um, tones on the banner. So I just wanted I just applied it to areas that have a lot of, of you know, detail, like his uh, his holster and the handle of his sword, and then highlighted up these areas with Evil Sun Scarlet, the mid tone red, of course. Working on the edges, building up some detail, looking good. And then I used the Evil Sun Scarlet as well to build up a bit of a gradient on the edging of the banner and the sword symbols and the sword on the banner. And finally, I used Old Gold from the Liquid Gold range of Vallejo to paint all the gold areas, which is just the parts of the banner, his hilt of his sword, um, and some of the skull symbols along his body. Wasn't a lot of gold on the model, but just adds another dimension, another color. It looks really nice in contrast to the other colors on the model. And the great thing about liquid gold is that it goes on so nicely, has such a great shine to it. And uh, yeah, but of course I did satin varnish repeatedly this model because of the fragility of it. It's a very fragile model. And that's it. So now I know how to paint up this Azrael model. In the end, he turned out really cool. A lot of detail on the banner, and just it was a lot of fun to paint up, and it's cool to have him now um, looking good, and he'll be going to kick butt for the Dark Angels on the tabletop. As you see, the banner turned out quite nicely. And yeah, a lot of great detail on him turned out quite nicely and uh, um, it was a lot of fun to paint up it's always cool in the models with a lot of detail in their banners and stuff it adds a whole new color scheme in and uh, as you see it was a bit long of a tutorial but uh, it was worth it he was a lot of fun and he looks good And that's it. So thank you very much for watching. Most importantly, thank you for subscribing to Warp. You people are awesome. Leave a comment in the comment section down below of what you want to see in future videos, and I'll do my best to make sure that every suggestion happens. So thank you very much once again for watching. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.